the realization of NGNs from the telco's point of view is very interesting. It takes some insight to understand that when next generation networks would be providing services from the existing telcos, then some monetary aspects and business dynamics would be changing. In this module, we'll appreciate what are the current trends and how the prospective potential payment models are going to look like. Currently, the voice over IP is already seeing standardization in the form of IP multimedia subsystem and most of the telcos have actually migrated on IMS. Now the question is, if IMS is to be used, then how the NGN is going to consider that as a given or certain telcos would still be asked to move to IMS before a standardized view of the telcos and a consistent view can be ensured. Likewise, if you look at the provisioning of 4G as in LTE and LTEA, the mandatory ITU requirement for 4G to comply to all IP has already been met. It means that all 4G networks are now ready to carry the IP, IP packetized traffic from the user equipment called part, calling party to the user equipment called party. That means the IP is now very much going to be there. How the telcos are going to look at it, let's see. As regards the provisioning of browsing, web surfing is concerned, www or the World Wide Web Service is going to be the same more or less the way it was provided by the internet service providers initially. Why? Because the current advertising and the placement of banners and the Google kind of statistics gathering regarding the clicks a website has seen would continue to be provided in the NGNs. But in the case of voice over IP, it is not going to be the marketable commodity. For instance, in traditional telecommunication networking, voice telephony is actually charged on pay per minute or pay per second basis. But when such migration is done for voice over IP, then another payment mechanism should be thought. Mostly we have seen that mobile broadband is leading in providing broadband access to the users compared to the fixed wireline technologies. But these mobile companies are relying more on voice service, that is 2G GSM standard voice service and SMS for making money. They are of course making money from data packages also, but the voice is still on the circuit switch network. How these companies are going to make voice over IP available and how are they going to get rid of traditional 2G uh, uh, voice circuit based communication and how are they going to essentially make business model out of voice over IP remains to be seen. 